Welcome to the Chaos Plan, where the odds may not always be in your favor. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Chaos Plan. If you'd like to know more about the show and have an idea of kind of what's going on and where we're at in the world, visit our website where we are currently working on an online campaign guide, which you can find at www.theadventuringguild.com. And if you would like to join the show or become a sponsor and help us make this podcast better, visit our Patreon account. Just search for The Adventuring Guild or our website to find a link. And by subscribing and helping us out, you can not only join our Discord to hear our episodes live, you can also become a member of the show, get some awesome merch, and represent the Guild. So thank you very much, and on with the show. Thank you for joining us once again for another episode of The Chaos Plan. We are once again doing an introduction, which is something we haven't had for a while, but I am really glad to get this player back into the game after the heroic sacrifice that she made with her last character. So I'd like to introduce once again Hope to the game, and she will tell you all about Alana. Hey everyone, this stated, I'm Hope, and I will be playing Alana. She is a human cleric with the acolyte background. She is the balance domain as a cleric, which means that uh, whenever she does healing, she also does damage. So it's all about making sure that everything's in balance, thus the name balance domain. Um, Alana serves the goddess Eldath, who is the goddess of peace. And since it's all about balance in the world, Alana got her powers of being a balance cleric uh, by having something taken away from her. So you have that balance but some got taken away. And that is her ability to balance. So not just in her dexterity, but also like her balance of emotions. Whenever she is not using her powers, her emotions are not in balance, and that really weighs on her, and so she deals with that by trying to make everything else around her completely balanced and even. And yeah, that's about it. (laughs) All right. I know this is going to be a fun meta thing, especially when we have characters like Vanderbin around who will purposefully pick on that. And uh, Klein and Stern, I know, will probably end up picking some fun on that as well. 100%. <laughs> All right, we will go ahead then and uh, get started. So Alana has been pretty much able to function in the chaos of Port City by maintaining a very balanced place that she resides in every day. So when you walk into the Temple of Peace, it is probably one of the most symmetrical experiences you will ever experience in a temple, other than the things that obviously can't be symmetrical, like doorways and windows, things like that. Everything else in there is as balanced as can be. When you walk in the door, all of the pews line up exactly like they're supposed to. All of the candles are burning at about the same level, at least until you get super close to look at them. They're all burning at the same perceivable level. Uh, The offerings that are left in the bowl are all, you know, if it's uh, five gold pieces and ten silver pieces, it will be, you know, completely divided out so that not only are the offerings on the altar balanced as far as the amounts on each side, but also the pattern. So it's a very symmetrical experience. And this has earned you not only some raised eyebrows, but also the appreciation of every other cleric within that temple, because it means that they don't have to do a whole lot as far as cleaning and organizing. You've got it handled. And as a matter of fact, you prefer that, because you don't want them to mess it up. Heaven forbid they should only dust one half of the pews and not the other half. So um, you've been working very hard on making sure that those that enter the Peace uh, Temple are not only at balance within 
their lives as far as um, the gifts that they are given by the deities are balanced off, balanced out by the amount of donations that they make and the amount of work that they do in service of the deity, but also in their lives as far as their health, as far as um, both mentally, physically, emotionally, or both, <laughs> you know, all of them mentally, physically, and emotionally, uh, making sure that they're fully taken care of. And so you really do develop a bit of a personal uh, relationship with many of the people that enter the temple. As such, uh, you are making sure that all of... Oh, I got something in recording text. I just stated balance word counter. Yes. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that we are going to hit the hundreds marker before we're done by this. Um, so you are able to not only reach that very personal relationship with everybody, but people kind of sense that about you and they come up to you. So during the normal day routines of making sure the candles are all burning at the exact same level, making sure that the wear marks on the uh, rug going in at the beginning are balanced out with the rug at the altar itself, and so you have to switch those around to keep the wear marks the same. Um, making sure that any of the holy writ, the books, you know, if the pages are dog-eared, you know, making sure that every single book has the same dog ear in it, um, you know, with all of that exhausting work. Uh, it's a welcome relief when a, a traveler comes into the temple and you can immediately see that he is very, very distraught. Uh, he appears to be a plumper, middle-aged man of human-ish descent. Uh, you're guessing half orc or uh, half troll or something along those lines. Something uh, a little bit more on the monstrous side of the race. All right. Um, as he enters, I uh, turn around and start walking to him and say, Oh, hello. What can I do for you? How can I help you? Uh, my name is Gromland, and it's been a very difficult day. I, I need some time at the altar to to gain some inner peace. It has been a trying trip here. We are refugees from... I didn't pick... Let's see. Uh, roll me a d7. Or a d7. Roll me a d8 and we'll take it minus one if it's an eight. That's a one. A oh, one. Okay, we're just gonna go with the first one then. We are refugees from the Tangle. The blood encampments and all the fighting there right at the edge of the forest has been more than what we could handle, so we left our tavern and came up this way, but sadly it is just me here now. It's just you? What happened to everybody else? My wife disappeared during the voyage here, and I don't know what happened to her, so I have already been to the Mages Guild to tried to figure out what happened to her, but they were unable to tell me anything, and I am now coming to the temple because I do not want to harm anyone or anything around me, as I feel a great amount of rage, and I know that this is the Peace Domain Temple, and I need some inner peace right now. Oh, you poor thing, of course! Yeah, I'm so sorry that happened, that is just awful. But being here, I can tell you, it's gonna be so good for you, I promise. Uh, the goddess Eldath, she does the best healing, and she will bring you all the peace. Um, as a cleric would like, I don't know, like, this is kinda like out of thing, but like, is there anything I can do that would like, help, like, calm him? Like, is there like a thing for that? There's a spell, Calm Emotions, if you have it. I don't remember what level it is, but I know there is a spell. Um, not sure if it's in your repertoire, though. Uh, let me see real quick. Yes, uh, I actually do. Um, so I want to uh, go up to him, and I'm just going to kind of put both hands on equally on his shoulders and start casting Calm Emotions. So, when you cast Calm Emotions, what would you be saying to him? Um, oh goodness, words. Um, I guess i just stand there and say, uh, just let the peace of Eldath run through you. Okay, and as you say those words, you can, you can see that a lot of that, that rage and that tension and pent-up anger just kind of slough off a little bit. You can see, his, you can feel that his shoulders, you know, kind of with a little bit of a shudder at first, but but then smoothly kind of lower a little bit. Uh, you can see even though he isn't actually that overly tall, uh, he, he kind of 
it gets a little bit more, you know, at your level, uh, you know, just stooping just a little bit as he relaxes. And um, I'm not even going to roll for the uh, save against it because he would willingly want to be, you know, he came here for peace, so he would he would be affected by that. Um, he is very much able then to kind of spend a little bit of time then at the altar. It bothers you a little bit because as he's you know praying and whatnot, he um, you know has one foot crossed over the other as he's kind of kneeling in front of the altar here, but he, he's not crossing his foot the other way. And so you can see the the line and the carpet. You know, it's making a little bit of a ridge there, and, and you know that's bothering you. But you've got it under control a little bit more than normal because you know you did just use your powers. Uh, that kind of helps soothe that. But after about five or six minutes of sitting there in prayer and meditation, he stands up and digs into his pouch and pulls out. I'm going to roll just so that I'm not purposefully being a dick by saying an odd number. No, four. Good. He pulls out four silver pieces, which is probably a pretty good amount for him. Uh, that's that's more than what most offerings would be. And he lays them, uh, or he sets them in the uh, bowl or collection thing and stands up. And he comes back up to you and he says, Thank you very much for what you have done to help me. It was very overwhelming. She was my other half, and without her, I barely know what to do with myself. We ran a tavern in the Tangle before all the fighting started, and I did all of the maintenance, chopping the wood, and cooking, and doing everything like that, and she did all of the room cleaning, and the the, uh, the waitressing, or the serving, and and together we were able to to run a tavern all on our own, but without her next to me, I don't know what I'm going to do now on my own. It's my whole life seems to be tilted and I can't I can't stand up straight anymore. Would my character happen to know if there's like any taverns around that would be like hiring? Oh, there are hundreds of taverns. Well, not hundreds. That would be ridiculous. There are dozens of taverns within Port City, so there would probably be one that you would know of either uh, down in the docks or in the cauldron for sure. Um, but if you were to go with him and try to persuade, I would allow you to try to get into one in the commons or in the merchant's district. Okay. Um a response to me like, oh, I can't even imagine just living your life without your other half. But I know exactly what we can do to help get your life back into balance. There are plenty of taverns that are hiding around here. Uh, there's a couple down by the docks. There's for sure one in the cauldron. But I can even go and help you find uh, a hiring tavern, probably down in the commons or the merchant area. I will try. I, I do need to work to make money, but I... I need to find what happened to my wife. I, I will try to raise enough money to go find where she disappeared at. They, we were on the ship coming back this way, and, and we stopped at a small island between the Tangle and here, and during that time, she just disappeared. It really worries me as to where she could have gone, but we searched for more than a day, and could not find her. There was nowhere for her to disappear to. And I, I don't think this is the first time either. The sailors didn't want to let me back on the boat because of the bad luck I might bring. Hmm. I still think the first step is going to be getting you back and working and getting some balance back in your life. But I will definitely continue and try to help and figure out why people are disappearing. That That's just not normal. Thank you. I've, I would like to be in the docks then I would be closer to the ships and unless you know of a better place that I could go I think that would be the best place for me to meet sailors alright yeah I'm sure we can find one down in the docks okay he would um, if you wanted to accompany him you could otherwise uh, he would be more than probably capable of getting a job down at one of the taverns in the docks yeah I think I'll just uh, accompany him down there then all right, so you're able to accompany him down to the docks, and you are able to come across... 
go ahead and roll me 2d10 and give me the numbers individually. They're both threes. They're both threes. Wow. The balance of it. <laughs> oh, this will work then. So it'll be the Sailor's Stein. That, you, you, that would probably actually catch your eye. The two S's, the balance of the, the word a little bit. So you're able to find this pretty decent looking tavern for the Docks District. And uh, you enter in with him. Would you introduce him or would you just kind of hang back and wait for him to kind of do his thing? Um, I would definitely uh, go up and introduce him. And like this whole time I'm sitting there with uh, two meditation balls in my hands, just sitting there fidgeting with them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because there are only, uh, there are, there are nine tables in this uh, uh, establishment and they're not evenly spaced at all. Um, but, uh, well, let me see first. Okay, this will work. But the bar does have four people in it. So there are four people within the nine tables. So I guess the four might balance it out a little bit. All right. Um, we walk in and I just go straight up to the bar then. Okay. And you just introduce him as Gomlin. Do you give any other kind of intro for him or what would you do? I was going to say, hey, uh, so this is my friend Gromlin. Um, he's looking for uh, a job. He has plenty of experience working and even owning his own tavern uh, back from the Tangle. But now he's here, and would you be willing to possibly help hire him, please? Okay. The... I'm just going to go with Player's Handbook. I don't want to sort through the rest. Oh, this will work. Uh, the half-elf bartender behind the um, bar looks uh, Gromlin up and down, and he says, Well, I do think that he would be able to do the work. Uh, he does look very competent, as you can see that Gom- Gromlin is uh, kind of checking out the bottles and, and whatnot behind the bar. He's kind of standing behind you a little bit, even though he's taller than you. And uh, he- he's checking things out, and he looks to be competent enough. He says, so, uh, we'll give him a try. Uh, does he have a place to stay yet? Uh, um, not necessarily. That hasn't quite been arranged. But we can arrange that if he needs it. Well, I'll tell you what. If, if you vouch for him, we'll go ahead and let him stay here with us uh, in the tavern. We've got a couple of rooms. He, he can stay here with us until uh, he finds other lodgings. And, and if he does uh, good work, we will... Uh, help him with the staff with uh lodging and whatnot but if not you know we'll come find you uh they could be able to tell from your robes and your holy symbol uh which temple you were with uh we'll come find you uh over there at eldath's uh temple and you know you can help him find other work you know but but he seems competent enough and you see gromlin is a little bit uncomfortable being uh kind of sized up or whatever and he's like yeah i'm ran a tavern in the tangle for years you know and then the two of them get to talk in and, and you think it'll work out pretty well so would you do any other kind of uh talking or would you just kind of walk si- quietly out as they continued their chat um one, once there's a quick pause i kind of just want to say just thank you so much for doing this this is so helpful but you really need to make sure that you either get rid of a table or another one in and you <laughs> get evened out. But have a good day, and may the peace of Elda find you today. And then I turn around and leave. What makes me laugh so much about all of that is I actually have seen bar stools with three legs that are a lot more stable than bar stools with four. So <laughs> just, I, I want to throw that out there, but I'm not going to be that mean. So you're able to then... Um, Let's see. So you're able then to uh, make your way out of the tavern and uh, back out into the docks district. What would you do from there? Um, I'd honestly probably just start heading back to the temple. Okay. You start heading back to the temple, and once again, it bothers you with how many um, stalls there are now on the left-hand side of the road versus the right-hand side. Uh, But you get past all of that. Go ahead then and roll me... A perception check. That's a 21. A 21. Yeah, with a 21, you are very easily able to see that there is a wonderful collection of what looks like, not necessarily holy artifacts, but uh, there's a wonderful collection of small statues and and uh, those kind of 
decorative things that you would find in a temple uh, on a stall that is on the right-hand side of the road, and that's partly, partially why you noticed it. Uh, and all of them seem to be arranged uh, from tallest to shortest, going down the front of the uh, stall there, and the individual that is standing behind there also appears to be pretty much plainly symmetrically dressed or whatever, like, you know, no adornments on one side or the other more than the other. So it's a very symmetrical, not symmetrical so much as balanced uh, market stall. Right. Um, I'd head over and just be like, oh, I just have to compliment you on your stall. You have such a great layout. It's so organized and oh, it just looks beautiful. Okay. The woman behind the stall says, oh, yes, thank you. We try our very best to make sure that the the stall looks like it is um, uh, is the most presentable it can be. Uh, I I see that you are with the uh, Temple of Eldaf. Uh, that is a wonderful, uh, I guess, calling. Uh, that is a wonderful calling uh, to be taken by. I uh, will hope to stop by the temple here before too terribly long. It has been such a long time since I gave any kind of offering. Uh, is there anything that the temple might want from my booth here? Uh, I don't have much coin to offer, but my statues are of the divine and of the celestial in nature, and I would be more than happy to donate one of these to your temple, uh, should you like. I'd be like, oh, yes, thank you so much. That is absolutely so kind of you. I would I would love to take one if it would help bring you peace. All right, so she reaches over to the uh, far side of the table where the statues are a little bit smaller. And she doesn't give you the smallest one, but she gives you one about... No, we're going to go ahead and say that there are... Ah, 12, good number. So there are 12 of these little statues, and she reaches down to the third one from the end and picks it up. So it would be about the size of a pop can, uh, roughly, and it would be a uh, angelic celestial-type creature. And she would offer it to you to take back to the temple for her, uh, and she promises to be in later at some point to uh, actually pray as opposed to just giving this offering. All right, um, I grab and say thank you so much. This is just absolutely wonderful. May Eldef bring you peace and balance today. You say that, she kind of bows to you and uh, wishes you the same as well, and as you kind of walk off down, you look over your shoulder, and it no longer matches up. She didn't fill the space with another one of the same size, so there's this, this rather than going down in this nice, smooth, little descending line, there's a, a jump in the line as it goes down, and there are now 11 on the table instead of 12. Um, I take my meditation balls and I start uh, fidgeting and spinning them a little bit more faster than before. <laughs> okay, you get back to the temple, and you see that one of the head priests or priestesses uh, is there. Um, let me go ahead and roll up a name, and that'll determine which gender. Alright, uh, so you see that the uh, head priestess Thessia is currently standing at the head of the temple, I guess, for lack of a better term, and she has a very concerned look on her face. Oh? Um, I walk up to her and I'm like, oh, uh, Priestess Thessia, is, is everything okay? We're a little bit concerned as there have been some rumblings that people have gone missing, and we're unsure of really how to proceed. As a temple dedicated to Eldath and of peace, it comes to us, or it, it falls to us to bring peace to the minds and hearts of those within Port City. But how do you bring peace to those who don't know what to fear? You can't pin down who or why people are dis who will disappear or why they are disappearing. So the peace of the people is very much disturbed. Oh, yes, we actually had uh, a fellow come in earlier today, um, and he was saying that his wife had been uh, taken or disappeared while he was on a, a ship from the Tangle to over here. And I, I got him a job and helped bring more peace and balance to his life, but again, that's just another case, apparently, of more people disappearing. This does worry us quite a bit, as uh, you well know, it's almost the end of the month, and 
as such the people are becoming more and more distressed, we worry what may happen as we go into the season of or into the month of rain. The last thing we need is for the next festival to be a dour one as opposed to one of celebration. Uh, as I know you are very aware of, the peace of the people needs to be in balance with, or the uh, the worries of the people need to be in balance with their hopes. And right now, there's no hope to be found. We don't have a solution or a cause, even. Hmm. Do we know of anybody else who's been looking for an answer, or anywhere to even start looking for an answer, or a solution? The divination, the Temple of Divination has been looking into this matter extensively, but they have been unable yet to divine a reason as to why this is occurring. Even the mages and their towers have been unable to locate anybody that has disappeared. Uh, this, this worries me a, a great deal, as if they are unable to find out, what chance do we have? Hmm. Oh, what what is that you have in your hand? Not not to make light of the situation, but that is a charming, charming little statuette. Oh, this, yeah. Uh, when I was walking back from uh, taking Gromland and finding him, at, as I earlier mentioned, uh, there was a stall on the way back, and all everything was just organized so perfectly. I stopped by, and the little uh, shopkeeper there was saying that she mentioned about uh, she's been meaning to come by and worship and give an offering, but she just hadn't found a chance yet, but hopes to, and uh, she said she would she would like to donate this to our temple as an offering, and so I brought it back. Oh, well, it's it's dear. It really is. Uh, let's put it up here on... Uh, oh. Uh, there's only one of them. Uh, I yeah, know that's, that... that's a pretty big issue. I, I, I just couldn't ask her for another one, but that's an issue, and I, I'm not sure what we're going to do about it. There's only one. Oh, uh, yes, I, I, I know. It's, it's been a while since the temple has any, any kind of uh, refreshing and updating. So, uh, here, and she pulls out uh, like we're going to go ahead and say about six silver pieces. And she hands them to you and says, go go back over there and purchase another one from her. That way uh, we can have one on either side of the altar. I know you wouldn't stand for there to be just one. Okay. Um, that, that'll work then. As long as she has one that's basically the same, that should be okay. I am sure she will have one close and, uh... We'll see. Go, go and look, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I know you have higher standards than I do, and she says that with a friendly smile, not a put-down. Is there anything you'd like me to look out for while I'm on my way back, or anybody need me to talk to about these disappearances? If you're able to find somebody in distress, as always, try to bring peace to their heart, but... Other than that, I, I don't want to keep you out too long. I, I know that it is going to be getting on to meal time soon, and uh, the last thing we need is for you to get hungry. Uh, we, you're, you are very persistent when you're in the best of states, and I uh, dare to say when you're hungry that you get uh, even more uh, particular. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll hurry out then. All right, you rush back over to where she is, and there's a gathering around the stall. Uh, I I slow down and start approaching a little bit more carefully and looking to see possibly if I can see what's going on. Yeah, it's it's a pretty thick crowd, and so you you have to do a little bit of pushing and shoving to get kind of up front. Go ahead and give me a perception check as you kind of cut up towards the crowd. That's a nine. All right. Uh, You're able to catch snippets of conversation, but nothing that's really coherent at first. Uh, You not only kind of hear the crunch of of, uh, like a metal, like a hollow type metal clay type crunch underneath your feet um, as you start walking forward. But you also hear murmurings of who's going to be next and of what's going on. It's even safe here anymore. And as you get closer to the stall, you get the sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach. And breaking through the front row, you can see that the stall looks as if somebody had taken a perfect half circle out of the front of it. 
and there are now only two statues on each side of the booth. Uh, the rest of them seem to have disappeared into this this half circle of where she kind of was standing and the table front was. A perfect half circle. And she's gone too? She's gone too. And in, as a matter of fact, the, the little stool that she was sitting on is gone. Uh, she had a, a small burlap type sack that was next to her and it appears to be as if also a half circle I, I guess as I kind of like walk up I guess kind of almost stop like I'm almost dumbstruck by it and I guess I just kind of take a moment to I guess try to gather myself almost just wondering what's wrong and what could have happened yeah would you talk to anybody around you or just gonna kind of silently try and wait I guess after a couple seconds, I guess I just turned to the person nearest to me and be like, what happened here? She was here one minute, uh, handing over change for a, a statue that was purchased and just gone the next. Everybody said that there was a, a flash and they heard a skittering type noise and all of a sudden just gone. Just gone? Just Just gone? People can just disappear, like right here? Uh, it, yeah, it took part of the table and part of the sack and, and the stool she was sitting on and and just just gone. I, I it's it's not safe in the streets anymore. I don't know what's what's going on here, but things I'm I'm packing up shop. I'm heading home. I, I, I the, we need to get the temple, the justice temple out here. Somebody's mages kidnapped I, I I don't know what's going on. Something has to be done. I, you're right. Why don't you go home? Um, I'm actually from the uh, Temple of Eldath. I'll I'll be reporting this back. No need to worry. You can go home. Go be with your family. Everything will be fine. I assure you. I I hope it'll be fine. I'll take your word for it, uh, pr- Priestess. And he does kind of a bow, and he does. Well, I uh, bid you a good 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 day then and he kind of cuts his way back through the crowd and you see the rest of the crowd while very curious now that there is a member of the uh, i'm assuming you're a member of the temples guild as well yeah okay and now that there's a member of the temples guild here an official quote-unquote person uh they would kind of slowly disperse okay um i guess i go up and take one of the statues that's the most similar to uh the one that uh, she gave me earlier, and I put it aside in one of my packs, and I kind of stand on like I'm pretty like super conflicted about like what am I gonna do about this stand? Like now I just took one of them off the side of the circle. There's the other one, but if I bring them both back, then we're gonna have this order <laughs> in the temple. And there's this half stool, there's this half stand, and I'm kind of ready to just almost turn away and just try to turn a blind eye to it. Okay, go ahead and give me an investigation check real quick. Um, investigation. That is a 17. A 17. You you notice that in the bag, the part that was torn away, uh, you're able to uh, see that there are more statues in those burlap sacks. And so you're, you're at least in that respect, you're able to uh, uh, find a replacement that is the correct size to put back on that other part of the stand. Uh, and as for the other part, you would know that uh, with enough noise that has been made, within a couple of minutes, somebody should be showing up from either the Merchants Guild, if they were a member of that guild, or from the Fighters of the Temples Guild in order to, to investigate what happened. All right. Um, knowing that, I'd probably just, as much as it pains me, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And since I don't have to worry about like someone coming and taking her stuff, then more people need to investigate. I'd leave it as is. Besides the statue that I took. (laughs) Yeah. Then you would be able to... um... Um, I'd also, like, put the uh, six coins that I was given, I'd put that, like, in the... the, Like, is her pay box thing still there? Uh, Yeah, we'll go ahead. Say so. Yeah, I'd put the six coins in there. I wouldn't just, like, actually, like, just take the statue. Like, I feel a little bit unsettled, like, just doing that. Like, she doesn't know exactly where the statue is going. Because I know personally, like, if someone just came up and took my statue, it, it's not going to be okay. Okay. So you make it back to the temple, and uh, the head priestess sees your obvious distress and says, What? what What's going on? I, I Is everything okay? What happened? 
um, I uh, hand her the statue and I kind of just start tearing up. I got there, but she was just gone and I don't know what happened, but she just disappeared and I, I don't know what we're supposed to do. I, I, I know we were supposed to investigate these disappearances, but I wasn't expecting it to just to just happen. She, she kind of not interrupts you, but she just comes up to you and puts her arms around you and says, shh, shh, it'll be okay. We'll get the Justice Temple on this. There was nothing you could have done. You you were not the, the uh, negative, or you were not, no, I don't want to say you were not the positive to this negative. Um, you were, you were, not, you, there was nothing you would have been able to do to help this situation. You are not a mage. You could not have, have reached into the far realms and pulled her back out you would not have been able to to track her down as some of the rain uh, some of the most accomplished hunters and rangers could uh, you would not have been able to to help even if you had been there so do not stress and worry about it Re- retain the balance within yourself i can see that you are very much out of sorts go ahead and retire to your rooms for the night and I will come about and summon you in the morning and we will get this figured out with the heads of the guild. Alright, I, I kind of sniff and like wipe away the tears and okay. Oh, oh, but now that we have two statues, we can put them up by the by the altar and everything's going to be balanced now. <laughs> oh, well, as, as long as that makes you happy, then it brings joy to me as well. Alright. Okay. So I guess we, we do that then. Okay, so then you retire to your room, um, obviously making sure that when you crawl into the covers that you untuck both sides of the sheet, uh, not just the one side and crawl in, and then when you, you know, climb into the bed, you make sure you're laying in the middle of the pillow, so the crease is the same, you know, not to one side or the other. Um, So uh, you are able to then get a good night's sleep, uh, though your dreams are a little bit haunted, you wake up kind of in a bit of a fuzz, um, not quite sure of what happened, what was going on with yesterday's stress, but no real remembered dreams come to you. So you wake up the next morning on the day of the 27th. Uh, The priestess, uh, Thessia, would have knocked on your door at the usual waking hour, uh, and you would have gotten ready in your normal routine, made sure that you... uh, tucked in both sides of the sheet on your bed, uh, you know, evenly so that it all lines up. Uh, You made sure that when you got your uh, glass of water, uh, that you took a sip from both glasses so that they were even, you know, one on each uh, nightstand on either side of the bed, uh, making sure the water levels are as even as possible before exiting the room. And you head down towards the temple guild main area itself. So you get into the main temple guild area itself, and it's, of course, very loud and very um, not not normal. Right now, there's a lot of people that are scared, and you hear a lot of fear in the voices of those around you. Uh, you follow Thessia into the... I don't want to say main cathedral, because there isn't really a main one, but kind of in a meeting area where the heads of each temple would meet whenever a gathering is required. And while talking, the general talking around you slowly dies down. And after a beginning opening prayer, that kind of thing, you are summoned to give your account of what happened. What would you tell them? Um, I tell them that, uh, well, earlier in the day, I went to uh, this woman's shop and she was selling statues and it was a beautiful shop, beautifully organized. And uh, she offered a statue as an offering to the temple, so I took it back. But since there was only one, I had to go back to get another. And when I came back, half of her stand was just gone. There was just this half circle just missing of all her stuff. The statues, the, 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 the entire like stand, the, her chair even. Just this half circle. Everything was just gone. And I asked what was going on to other people, and nobody had a clue. You see that they kind of murmur amongst themselves and are a little bit worried. And one of the priests would say to you, Have you 
known or heard from anybody else that would have had the same experience. Uh, do you know any others that have disappeared? Oh, yes. Actually, by just chance yesterday as well, uh, earlier in the day, the whole reason why I went down there, uh, my friend Gromlin, he's now working at the Sailor's Stein. He used to own a, uh, his own tavern, but now he's here. But while he was on his way here, he said that they stopped at an island in between the Tangle and here, and his wife had just disappeared, just was gone. And they tried to find her, but apparently they couldn't, and so now... Now he's just missing his other half, and we need to find out what's going on. Hmm. Uh, you, you see the one kind of sit back in his chair and begin scratching his chin. Uh, one of the priestesses in the knowledge uh, trappings uh, kind of sits forward, and she says, Do you have any knowledge or any theories as to why she was taken? Uh, We are at a loss in our temple, and so any information you could give us would be very helpful. I'm sorry, but I I really have no idea. She she said she was planning on coming to the temple uh, later this week. Hope she's not it been a while, but I have no idea why this would have happened just to her. And for Gromlin's wife, he never said it. He had no idea why it happened either. It seemed completely random. And she sits back and and kind of stares off into space a little bit as well. Um, The last of the uh, clerics to lean forward says, As a member of the Temple of Eldath and as part of the overall mission to bring peace within everything in life would you be opposed to setting out and trying to assist us in finding out what has happened as a as you are a bit of a unique case having known now two people that have disappeared very recently and many of us are still trying to understand why it is happening. With with your first-hand experience, would you go out and assist in our temple to find out what is happening? I will do what it takes to bring back balance. They all nod in assent and begin murmuring amongst themselves. And after a little bit, another priestess leans forward and she says, Then as one of the highest in the Temple of Justice, I grant to you the authority to investigate these matters and to seek out others of others who have disappeared, or not others who have disappeared, to seek out others who know of the disappearances and to bring us that information and that knowledge. You will have the resources that we are able to grant to you in order to make this happen. As such, being a member of the Temple of Eldath, and a follower of balance, we offer to you this artifact in exchange for your help. And they bring out this pendant. Uh, did we ever decide what it looked like? I don't think so. I don't think we really talked much more about it. All right, then to put you on the spot once again, what would it look like? Um, uh, the, the first thing that kind of comes to mind with the whole threefold thing is almost like the whole Triforce thing. And yeah. So- I kind of want to think like a triangle made out of like three circles kind of thing. All right, so you're given this artifact and your assignment. Uh, it would still be fairly early in the afternoon when the meeting is adjourned and dismissed. They told you that the only real leads that you would have are to talk to those who uh, have loved ones or known people that have disappeared and to visit some of the great guilds. Uh, especially the divination uh, temples as well as the school of divination within the mages guild to gain more information so what would you like to do from here it would be mid morning after well probably afternoon ish by this time about mom i'd probably start heading out towards the temple of divination all right, you head out there, and you can see that already there are lines and lines and lines of people out front. Everybody milling around, waiting for their uh, results, I guess, to be told to them. Very concerned about their loved ones or friends or whatever. Um, as a member of a temple, you would be able to cut through the lines and head straight into the temple if you wanted to. 
We'll do, oh, and I also want to mention that when I took the pendant, I actually just, I put it on and then like hid it underneath my robes because I can't even look at the artifact right now. Okay. Okay. So then, um, you cut straight into the temple? Yeah. All right. You cut straight in. Would you find one of the, uh, head people there or would you try to talk to some of the people inside that are requesting help or what would you do? I'd probably just go straight first towards uh, one of the head people. Alright, you approach them and they, being diviners already, they kind of wave you in and they say, we know you're here to investigate. What questions uh, do you have for us? Uh, We can't tell you much, but we would be happy to answer those that you might have. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, what information do you have about the disappearances, I guess? Do you have any kind of common factor leading, leading into them that you've seen? All of our scrying has led us to believe that they are not necessarily somewhere, but uh, we are unable to pinpoint the location. So the fact that we can't even pin it to a specific area means they probably aren't being kidnapped by somebody. But the fact that we can't identify any kind of area means that we really have no idea where they are. Uh, As far as we know, they are not dead from all of the readings that we have done. Uh, We have not pulled a single card of death, uh, as far as we know. And the last thing we know is that nobody has come back thus far. Everybody that has request, or at least everybody that has requested us to look into the whereabouts of a loved one we have been unable to see them come back. Um, do you happen to know when the first disappearance was, or where it was? We are unsure of any previous events of this happening, but the first reported incident of somebody disappearing in such a manner occurred about a month ago, on the second of planting. But other than that, We have been unable to identify any other incidences before that. There are always disappearances, but most of those are either easily explained or don't meet the same unique characteristics that these have. All right, thank you so much for your help. May Eldaf bring you peace and balance. Um, Then I turn and I... Uh, go and try to like start talking to any of the people that have had a disappearance happen to them or someone well obviously not happen to them but happen yeah. to someone they know okay about how long would you spend talking to people I'll give you kind of a, just a brief overview of everything that uh, they say um probably not too long I don't know maybe like maybe a full hour Okay. Uh, We'll go ahead and say that between talking to the priest and talking to the people, it would be right about an hour. Um, So you're able to gain basically all the same things. A loved one or a friend disappeared. They were just doing what they always do, or they were traveling or something along those lines. So nothing specific that they were doing ties together. Uh, The only thing that you hear frequently and you're not sure if it's a common theme or if it's just how people talk about those that have disappeared. They were either very intelligent or they were very um, accomplished or they, they had a great potential in front of them. Like one of them would have been on his way to join the Fighters Guild because he was a very good smith. Um... Another one would be going to the Temple Guild because they were amazing at memorizing scripture and had lines and lines of scripture, uh, you know, in their head. Uh, Another one would be heading to the Mages Guild because they were able to cast spells uh, sooner than anybody else in their village ever had. Uh, So you're not sure if it's just them speaking very highly of the people that have disappeared or if they all were very accomplished. Hmm. All right. All right. So where would you like to go from here? It would be just after lunchtime. Okay. Uh, so they said the temple divination and then there was the mages guild, right? Yeah. The mages guild itself has divine, uh, uh, the school of divination, the magic school of divination. That's right. Yeah, I'd start heading towards the school station then. Alright, you head towards the Mages Guild, and it's, once again, 
If there is anything to be said about magic users, it is that they do not fit a specific mold or fit any kind of what you would call balanced idea. You have all sorts of eccentricities that, you know, think like if Fairy Tale got together with Radiant, I think is the new one, you know, the sorcerers from Radiant, if all those people got into a room together, it would be just as chaotic and ridiculous as far as people's looks, as far as what they do, as far as everything else. So it's just glaring to you. Uh, so the fine arts <laughs> building. Yeah, basically, yeah. Fine <laughs> arts building on Cosplay Day. Um, <laughs> So you're able to um, make your way into the Mages Guild and you're able to get a little bit of help from the voice of the tower, which is uh, kind of a spirit that is, from your understanding, a sentient link to the tower, kind of an embodiment of the entire wizard's tower. Um, So you're able to get some information from them and they direct you down into a very large room that's got a ton of different doors and symbols around it. Are you proficient in Arcana? Yes. Okay, then you would be able to identify these symbols each having to do with the school of magic. Uh, You very quickly are able to identify which one is divination, and as you go to uh, enter into the door, a door that had an hourglass above it bangs open, and you see a large Goliath man and a uh, tall human with glowing eyes, kind of yellow eyes who is extremely tall, almost as tall as the Goliath it seems Uh, a a dwarf with a long beard and a short halfling man with a wisp of hair on top, all come kind of stumbling out of this uh, chamber with the hourglass on top of it, and the voice of the tower is looking at them a little bit uh, reprimandingly, so you're pretty sure that they were kind of in a timeout or something along those lines. They were definitely being punished. Uh, and as you go to kind of look a little bit close to the door to the uh, the diviner's uh, section of the Mage's Guild opens up, and a... I'm going to go ahead and stay with her because I like uh, the older lady, the, the kind of the hat the seer type deal. So this very old, decrepit-looking lady that you're pretty sure if you sneezed would be enough force to knock her over uh, answers the door and she says, Come in, come in. I know you have many questions. Follow me. (laughs) Thank you. I do have many questions. (laughs) All right. She says, Oh, I know, I know. And before, uh, uh, before you ask, yes, I do know what you're going to ask. I just don't know how you're going to ask it. And any follow-up questions that may lead from the original question. So it's easier to come in and more civil to the besides. Um, oh, I see that if I take you into my study, it's going to drive you crazy. I have artifacts all over the shelves and I don't want to put you off. So let's go, ah, uh, let's go into here. And you open, she opens up a door and you see just scrolls of parchment. Um, the the entire walls are lined with scrolls of parchment, so they're not necessarily symmetrical in that they all line up, but at least the atmosphere is much more symmetrical. You're you're surrounded by shelves of scrolls. Uh, so she takes you in there, sits you down, and she says, "Oh yes, uh, two cups of coffee or two cups of tea, and let us put uh, the kettle here in the middle of the table, and we'll sit here and oh, uh, let me scoot these chairs around because there was an uneven number of chairs, and so she scoots two chairs so that it's, you know a, a, a small table with a chair on each side unoccupied. You guys sitting across from one another, a kettle in the middle, and a cup of tea in front of each. Uh, so very symmetrical looking. And she says, okay, go ahead and ask your first question. Okay, um, my first question, I guess, is just very broad of what you know about the disappearances that have been happening. Oh, we know a great deal, and by that I mean that there's a great deal we do not know. Uh, We have a thousand questions and no good answers. Uh, From what I can tell, uh, some form of magic, but magic that isn't uh, the type that we can cast is being performed. Uh, But I do not know from where or from or or who would have the ability to cast such a spell. Uh, We know that these are randomly opening portals, not unlike the portal crystal we have ourselves. In fact, it's disturbingly similar, but we do not know why. Other than that, uh, there is very little else we know about the mechanics of the disappearances. Hmm, that's very helpful. So, 
these portal systems, are these something that someone has to, like, is someone controlling the portals then? We control the portal in a way here, the large crystal, if we focus on a particular vision that we see upon looking at it, we enter that vision instead of one of the numerous others that can be seen within the crystal, and in it, it follows a fairly routine elemental pattern, but other than that, that's all the moral control we really have over it. As far as these new portals opening up, as far as we know, they could go to the same place. They could go to nowhere. They could go to to a hundred different places. We honestly don't know. But as far as I know, especially when working with your temple, uh, not your temple specifically, but the, the temple with the seers and the diviners, uh, they are unable to pinpoint a location specifically. So my best guess is that they are going somewhere outside of what we perceive as a place. Uh, but other than that, I, I do not know what else I can tell you about it. Hmm. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um. Oh, I'm happy to help, dear. Um, now, quickly, quickly drink your tea. Uh, I've already finished half of mine, and your glass is still full. Uh, then, uh, then I will see you on your way. I quickly just chug half the tea. <laughs> it's not like uncomfortably hot, but it's definitely a little bit warm. And, and she then uh, leads you back out of the divining area. But with the, any other questions before she, you know, kind of sees you out? Oh, I can't think of any. All right, you. She opens up the door uh, out there into that big circular room, and by that point, um, the weird mix of people in timeout uh, are now dispersed and gone. Um, so you're not quite sure where they probably ended up at. So, uh, where would you like to go from here? It would be two-ish, probably, at this point. Dude, that probably would have been a question to ask. Where do I go next? <laughs> if you aren't sure, you would know that, um, typically the jobs board would have a long list of, um, you know, requests for aid and that kind of stuff, so you may be able to find some more information from individual people about uh, those that have disappeared. Otherwise, you can always return to the Temples Guild uh, and try and pick their brain to see if they know of anybody else that might be taking part in the investigation or to the Fighters Guild or even the Mages Guild. You could ask the Voice of the Tower to see if they have anybody working on it specifically. Uh, any one of those things if you're looking for help. Otherwise, you can uh, go try and interview citizens throughout the area, kind of whatever you would like to do. Yeah, um, I'll just ask the voice of the tower then if they know of anybody else investigating the disappearances. Yes, we, as a matter of fact, uh, just dealt with a small incident in one of the training rooms earlier. I believe you were just getting into the divination section of the guild. Uh, we do have a group of individuals that are working on it, though I do not believe that they have made any headway that way yet. If you would like, I would be happy to pass on your information to them in the morning. I know that they are rather involved with research at the moment, and I do not want to interrupt them, but I'm sure they would be more than willing to accept your help come morning. That would be great. Uh, if you'd let them know that if need be, if need be, they can find me at the uh, Temple of Peace. I would be more than happy to pass that on, Alana. Good day to you. Thank you. All well, right. I guess with that, I'd probably end up just heading back to the temple. All right. You head back to the temple. You do your usual cleaning up routine um, for your usual work. They would give you your stipend of uh, five silver pieces for the day um, since you did some investigating outside of that. Uh, is there anything else you would like to do before we end this session? Um, no, I think that's it. All right, then we will go ahead and call it here. So thank you very, very much, Hope. This was a lot of fun, and I'm going to love the meta aspect of being able to throw in those little details about stuff being uneven, and I know Danderbin is definitely going to be picking on that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, things just really was fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will go ahead and end here. So go ahead and say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 
Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us for that episode with the intro with Alana. I would also like to say thank you to all of our wonderful listeners that took part in the Extra Life campaign. Uh, It was a blast, and I know we were getting kind of crazy there at the end. We managed about 21 hours out of the 24, which was pretty awesome. And we raised almost $300 with that campaign. So thank you very, very much for everybody that took part. Very quickly, I have a announcement as the first giveaway is officially going through today. So congratulations to Dan S. of Seattle. So I will go ahead and reach out to you and get that Descent into Avernus sent to you. So we will go ahead and do our next giveaway now. Arcadia has three main continents. What are they? The answer to that can be found on our website, www.theadventuringguild.com, and you can send any of your answers, along with your name and address, to dmbob at theadventuringguild.com. And the all-important prize that you guys will be guessing is a little owlbear dice bag. So this dice bag is super adorable and looks like an owlbear with its claws out and everything, so I'll post a link to what it is in the show notes below. So go ahead and shoot all those answers to that email address, and you guys can be entered to win that. The announcement will be, as always, the first Chaos Plan episode of the month. So thank you all very much.